Okay, so I want to do an update on my Coffee Cozy template. You may have seen the Coffee Cozy video that I filmed quite a while ago. I've made changes to it, not only to the template itself, but also the way you use it. So this is an update. If you're watching this video for the first time, go back and watch the previous video because I'll say a, a few things there that I'm not going to say here. So the Coffee Cozy, this is the way it comes now. It is fatter than the previous Coffee Cozy because I had a group of ladies in Pensacola that went to the local coffee shop and they tested my Coffee Cozy out with customers. The original Coffee Cozy, the width from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, was the same size as the cardboard that you get from Starbucks. And what happens with that is that when you hold the cup, a regular size, that cardboard, this finger and this finger, they're on the cup, on the glass, on whatever it is. When I made this, I wasn't a coffee drinker, I don't drink a lot of hot drinks or cold drinks, so it wasn't something I had personal experience with. Now I'm a coffee drinker, hate to say it, but I drink it cold. So with this, my fingers here protect it. So what I did was I made it fatter. So this has been changed. If you have the previous one, that Coffee Cozy, and you want to do an upgrade, I'll give you an upgrade price. So if you bought the previous one and you want to buy this new one, let me know and I'll put money towards the purchase of the new one so you get some credit. All right, so this is our Coffee Cozy. I want to talk about also how we're going to finish off because I've come up with a few new things. Because this is wider, we're going to change the way we finish off. And I'll talk about that stuff later on. So let's talk about our fabrics. In the previous video, I showed you this, and I want to just reinforce it. Do you see I've got wrong sides down? That's not how we want to go. We want to go right sides together or wrong sides together, either way. And then you'll have a piece of batting too. I don't have batting, I didn't bring any for the video. So imagine I have batting in there. The beauty of the get a grip material is that I can grab and cut all of these layers at the same time. So if you have fabric where you want to take advantage of something, I don't have anything here that's any different, but if I wanted to have certain things, when I look at this, I place this down and just kind of look underneath and that'll give me an idea. I want to use this so that I've still got extra fabric so that I can make some more. So I'm going to turn and when I go to cut, again, we're going to think batting. Batting or puller fleece or felt or something that's going to give a little bit of a substance. You can also use a towel on the back or you can use polar fleece on the back or felt on the back instead of as a centerpiece. Um, and then the terry cloth fabric that you can purchase. So it doesn't have to be fabric, it can be a towel from your linen closet. But the idea is I can cut all of these at the same time. Again, we're cutting from the shoulder and when we cut, we're gonna move the template as we go. So you can use any rotary cutter. I like the Martelli rotary cutter just because it's not gonna cause any of the pain to my back and my shoulder and my wrist and everything else. But you can see I'm moving that template as I go. What's nice about this is if I have a layer of batting in between, I could have cut two out at the same time. So we're gonna again pretend that I've got batting inside. The reason why I wanna do that is when I sew these together, do you see how if I had laid them wrong sides down or right sides up, how these don't join up here and these don't join up here. So you wanna make sure that you flip. What we would do is with the batting here or the batting down here, we would sew. And we would continue to sew. We're gonna now talk about the other changes that I think are really great. Because this coffee cup, plastic cup, whatever it is, versus this coffee cup, they're different diameters across if you add one piece of elastic, which you saw me do in the previous video, I just had one piece and it was an elastic like this. These are those headbands. If we add one like this, then it's only gonna fit whatever size cup that you've got at the time. So what I wanna do is have it so that it adjusts to a wider cup or a narrower cup. So instead of using this elastic, we're gonna use this elastic. Now you can get them at Walmart, you can get them any place, but Dollar Tree has a whole bunch of them for a dollar in all different colors. So with this, you would cut this little piece here, like I've got here, cut off that metal, and when we sew, this part is gonna go inside. And then I wanna have this. So this part, later on it'll stick out, but we're gonna place it in this way. When I place that in this way, pretend that I've cut that metal. When I place that in this way, again, I'll have my batting here or under there. I like to put a pin here and a pin here. That way when I go to sew, that um, elastic isn't gonna separate. Later on, we'll go in and tie that knot in here. So that adjusts to a wider cup here 
or a smaller cup here. So it really just makes it really practical. Then when you go to put your buttons on, you'll put your buttons on once you get your cup. So we'll take a closer look at that in a second too. So this elastic also is easier to sew over than this. The rounded elastics, let me show you this one. This is a better one of not to do. This is a what not to do. See how this is rounded? When you go to sew over that, you may break a needle, you may end up jamming your machine, depending on the quality of your machine. This guy here is harder to sew, this one much simpler. So that makes all the difference. And then you can choose whatever kind of buttons. So I've got some, if I can get them over here, I've got heart buttons here. But what's really neat too is they make these hair clips like this that already have buttons, if you want to call it a button. So you can use these as well. What I don't recommend is that you pick something that's really big and really bulky because your fingers are going to be right around here. And if I've got big bulky buttons, kind of like what I have here, these guys, my fingers need to go somewhere else. So you can see if I hold it this way or I hold it this way, this is a nice option. So I want to talk about this one for a minute. You can see here that I've got the outside elastic. This is the inside elastic. Same thing down here. But what's different about this one is these aren't buttons. These are pins. I've got fabric that's a recycle theme, and I found recycle pins. What I like about this is if you're giving this as a gift, you can tell whoever you're giving it to, hey, I don't care what size cup you use, move the pins further back or further closer for the size of your cup. A bigger cup, you're going to need to have more elastic. So elastic is really a nice thing, those hair clips. They make the hair bands, the hair elastics, whatever you want to call them. Um, again, in all different sizes, different colors, different textile, you know, te texture, all kinds of things. So let's look at a couple here. This one I've got pink. This looks like I embroidered this. It is embroidered. I didn't do it. It would cost a, a, a more time, a more time, more money. But this I got at one of the local craft shops. Um, in the scrapbooking department and they had it on sale for 99 cents and there were probably five more on that sheet. So this looks like it's work that I put into it. It just gives it more of a shabby chic kind of a look. And then you choose the buttons, how much embellishment you want to do. This one, I've added the lace here and some buttons that kind of have a lace look and again, the elastic. I want to talk for a minute about Velcro. A lot of people have done Velcro. People ask me all the time, why don't you do Velcro? Velcro is not one size fits all, but one size fits one. When I place this on here, do you see how this doesn't fit this cup? This is a bigger cup than standard, but even on something like this, do you see how this just barely fits? This is a perfect size for this, but it's one size fits one, not one size fits all. So if you're going to do the elastic, I mean, uh, Velcro, then what I recommend you do is add yourself an inch, an inch and a half here. And when you put the Velcro, put this piece, this is the rough stuff, put it this way. And then this piece, the soft stuff, go this way. If you go this way and you made it too big, when your fingers hit the Velcro that's here, it's soft. I don't want my fingers on this, that feels bad. So put this piece of Velcro going this way if you want to do Velcro. What's the benefit of Velcro? Well, it's a whole lot cheaper, it's a whole lot faster. I don't have to pay for buttons, I don't have to sew the buttons on, this can be done by machine. So, pros and cons. What's the fastest way to do these? This. Now, I did a pretty one with some prettier elastic, not this, but something a little bit prettier inside of here, some color. These guys here, if you make this with a piece of elastic in here and a piece of elastic in here, then that will adjust. If you're gonna do a whole bunch and these are more practical than they are pretty, then this is great. So this will adjust for a bigger cup or a smaller cup. Let me put this on here. You can see here it fits, but it will also fit. Imagine I have a bigger cup, it will stretch. So change the elastic. I call this the ugly underwear elastic. In the old days, we had that white elastic on all of our underwear when underwear only came in white. Now you can go in and add something with some color. They also make these little guys these are, again, it's another type of elastic. This really works well in here too. So find what you have at home. You may have to go raid your daughter's um, hair clips or whatever. See if you can sneak some by without her knowing about it. But this is a fast, easy way for you to finish off the Coffee Cozy. What's nice about the Coffee Cozy is you can personalize to whoever. Runners, people that are into photography, holidays, red, white, and blue for Memorial Day, uh, 4th of July. 
environmental, that's the same kind of concept as this. You've got a college kid that's big time into drinking coffee, but they want to be kind of a college kid, so make it a little punk or retro, whatever. People that have dogs, cats. If you love the Tim Holtz stuff like I do, here's some of the Tim Holtz fabric, or you just like the vintage, or for somebody that's a little bit older, they'll appreciate this look because it takes us back. And oh, by the way, can you see the direction that I have here? The fabric direction I talked about in the previous video, if you want that direction here, this is the way the fabric's supposed to go, then when you lay out that template, look at your fabric. I don't really care that it's this way because this is gonna go around the cup like this so I'll be able to see. But if the fabric direction makes a difference, then definitely you know, take advantage of that. All right, go watch my previous video if you haven't seen it, and uh, send me some pictures of what you make with these. I'd love to see them. Okay, I have one more thing to add. This is that fabric that's already pre-quilted for you. If you wanna do something like this, in my previous video, I said you can put a binding on it. This gives you an idea. Here's your prepackaged binding. You can make your own too. I started gluing this on just because I didn't have any pins and I had glue in my hands but no pins. And then we would do a decorative stitch on top of here or double needle or top stitching, whatever it is. But you can imagine this coming along all the way around here. If you're gonna do a bundle of gifts, Later on, you'll see my video, my box bag. You can do the box bag. You can do the copy cozy. You can do the microwave bowl template and do it as a gift and put all of the nice little tools and things in the, in the box for them.